Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today we are going to use the Rhino 7 new function sub D tool to create this antler ring. Are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, that's starting with the circle right at the front view for 16 millimeter. And I'm going to draw my antler and they roughly going to look something like this. It really depends on your design, but I try to make it uh, look nature. So you may want it to have some reference with you. Um, that way you don't feel like it is like really weird or like a meme. So I want to have one there and roughly about here, it's going to growing up something like this. And then it's going to grow in something like this, I think. And maybe you want to have one over here going something like this and another one coming out like this. All right. I hope that look okay. And then if you don't like it, you can keep adjusting it. All right. So now we have this drawing here. Um, I need to make sure it's not over this ring shank. Otherwise all this tip will just folding in between the finger. So I want to scale it down something like this and maybe moving in a little bit. And I want to have the V looking things right there. So this might want to moving something like this. All right. At this point, whether they are touching or not touching, it's okay because we're going to change it uh, later on. Uh, but I would like to have this one coming over something like that. All right. So the key for this arrangement is you try not to do something like really pointed something like this. All right. This area right there, if you have it really pointed, it will have a hard time in the sub D to edit it. The best way is try to move in them as 90 degrees as possible. So that way will come out prettier. All right. This might a little bit too pointed. So I may want to move in out like this. And this one too, gonna move it up like this. Okay, so we get the basic shape. Now we need to turn in those curve right here and follow this curve. And we can do curve on two view one by one, but it's gonna take forever. So I would like to get them into this surface and maybe move it back a little bit. So on my top view, I'm going to pick up all my curve and I'm going to project it to this surface there. And you can see it projected to both top and the bottom. We don't need the one on the bottom. So let's go ahead to delete it. And we don't need this surface anymore. All right. Uh, that's hiding the original curve and we're just dealing with this one. Now with this curve, um, this is not a sub D curve. In order to make the sub D surface, you need to have a sub D curve. I basically want to select everybody. And right here, there's an icon called make a curve sub D friendly. And we want to click on it. All right. Feel like nothing is changing, but actually they are because the sub D curve does have that little dot there in between first and second um, control point. All right. So now I know this is a sub D. I'm going to come over here. And now the key is all the point right there has to exactly touching the line that is going to pipe together. So at this point, I'm going to using the move command to snapping back to the near need to be on. We want to snap into the near. And I would suggest you do from the bottom up. Otherwise you will need to keep changing it. So this guy right here, I'm going to moving from this point to the near point, All right? The same going to do all of all of the curve and it doesn't have a, so many curve. Uh, so I'm not going to speed it up, but you get what I mean here. We want to moving this point to the near and make sure everybody is touching. All right. Beautiful. Okay. So now once we are touching, we're going to select everybody and we're just coming over here for the multiple pipes on the sub D. It will ask you what is the radius. Uh, I'm going to have a something like 0.4 millimeter radius. Uh, the cap is on. 
you have a choice in between zero to one. So zero is the smoothest one. I'm gonna type it zero here and we'll get something like this. If we take a look um, on the view, you're going to see something look like, look like a cactus, right? So it's not there yet. Uh, we can do some modify there. So to work with the sub D, if you just pick up the object, then you pick up the whole things. Uh, I'm going to pick up all the curve first. And beside this circle, everybody, I'm just going to hide it, right? So we won't accidentally to pick on it. All right, so this antler looks really cute. It's not what we're looking for. We need to make them look a little bit more attractive, uh, more like nature, so which means the tip need to be more pointed, the body need to be fat or something need to be irregular. It cannot be so regular like this. All right, so in the sub D tool, you have uh, this filter here for pick up the edges, pick up the face and pick up the point, right? So you can, play in between those. So for example, I'm going to pick up the faces on all faces there and I simply just want to 3D scale it down. The same thing I'm going to pick up over here and I want to 3D scale it down. So then I will have the, the end is, is pointier. So we're going to do that for all of them first. And then if you feel like this is a little bit too short, you can actually move it up. So we're going to look at all three view. And we're going to move it up like this. And then we're going to tweak it by bringing it down. Okay. And then uh, the same thing we're going to do for all the tip first. Going to pick up all of these faces. And then let's scale it down. And maybe only this, this few faces there and scale it down something like that so we want to we want to make sure all the end is uh pointed and also this is jewelry so you you do not want to point it in the way to hurt anybody all right and then where on the bottom should be thicker so maybe i want to pick up you know the edges coming over here scale it up or something like that and maybe you want to turn around this guy or move it out like this and to do whatever follow your design and maybe I can pick up this curve beef up a little bit so it have more of this curve over there the same thing I'm going to keep playing until you find you know the position that you like pick up the edges there bring down something like this so they don't look so uniform if you happen to have something like this seems like jamming in there, as you can see on my perspective, like this line is jamming there. I actually want to pick up this line by double click to the neighbor and I can delete it. So then I will smooth out the surface like that. So you keep tweaking, like make this bigger or smaller or whichever that you think that fit into your design. Okay, so um, maybe this one need to go down something like this uh, I mean you can spend a very good time here to keep tweaking until you find something you like so I'm going to stop here for the demonstration and maybe one more like this one need to be thinner all right so then also want to make sure that it is still follow you know the circle if not you kind of need to move it back all right so now we have something like this now the next thing is we need to make a ring. I simply want to draw a profile on my right view. So let's go to the ghost view. We want to use the conic corner. I want to design something look like this. Rounded. Okay. And then uh, basically I wanted to move it this guy to the quadrant there. So that will be right in the middle. If you try to pick up the whole thing, you only pick up the partial of it, it's because it is in the sub D mode. Right here, you have select filter for none. So then that way you can select uh, the whole things. Next thing, so what we are going to do is create half of a ring shank. And then somewhere in between here, it's going to blend it into the ring shank. Under the sub D command, that you have all this option or the, you can call it out the sub D toolbox. And right here you have the sweep one. 
So what I like to do is I like to use a sub D sweep one rail and to sweep this one to this one. I do I do have an option here. It's going to ask me adjustment for the shape and I'm going to keep it six faces, the same like the place I'm going to bridge together. Adjustment for the rail, I'm going to bump it up for 16. So I know that is a, a good point to uh, to blend it together. So I, let's click OK. All right. So now we have this. Uh, we only need half of them. So I'm going to use the faces and pick up all the other half of the faces. And let's just go ahead to delete them. I also don't need this one here. Double click on the faces in the loop and then we're gonna delete it. I might need to bring up my design going up like this and actually it seems like a little bit too thin. So let's go ahead to scale it and beef up if you want to. Kind of rotate it a little bit right there something like this. And this opening is way too close to this one when you uh, try to bridge it, it may not look good. So we are going to use selection filter. Let's select the age of this guy. So I want to move it this one just back a little bit so it's easier for you to see as well. All right. So now what I'd like to do is delete this one open and this one open. So then I have that opening there and notice that you have one, two, three, four, five, six, six edges there. And I have a six edges here as well. So we need to have an equal number and we are going to use the command in the sub is called bridge. And then you want to bridge the first set is right here. Enter the second set is right there. Enter. And then you will connect it together. You can decide it how many sections that you want. Maybe you want them to be curved a little bit. So I may want to have additional section there. I think two is enough. And then I hit OK. Then you will have this nice and beautiful blend. Notice that it's jamming in a little bit. So maybe I need to move these edges. Let's double click. and move it out just a little bit like this. All right. And the range doesn't have to be like so symmetrical It's because it is more of the nature and you can make them thinner or thicker and you can, you know, changing those pieces. So maybe you want to moving this one out and moving this one in or whatever you think is it look nature to you. Okay, so I'm going to stop tweaking here. This still look a little bit weird. So I'm going to bring this one up a little bit, maybe something like this. All right. Okay, so now I have something like this and we only work half of them. It's because we can do something similar like a mirror in the sub D it's called reflect. So I'm going to pick up the object and then the reflecting plane, it's going to be Y axis. And you're going to click on the side that you like. So I'm going to click on this side of the Y axis and just hit enter. Then that will mirror or uh, in the sub D is called reflect to the other side. Okay. And what happened for the reflex is um, if you do any changing. So let's say I'm going to pick up this faces right here. And then I would like to make them toward inside a little bit longer and the other side will follow. It's more like a history that we have in Rhino. Okay, and then we can tweak it and it will follow like that. Okay, so once you have everything that you like, you can keep editing. Let's say I want this faces is going to go coming in a little bit more. This going to coming in a little bit more and I can even um, kind of rotate it a little bit and you can keep tweaking until you like the shape. All right. So if you like that, everything looks nice to you. You no longer want to edit it into the sub D. What you wanted to do is coming into the object, convert the object to the nerve and you're going to convert it 
the whole things on this one and hit enter. It will ask you if you want to delete the uh, original object. I don't want to delete it because I usually, I might want to change it later on. So I want to keep something that I can keep changing. And this the one that you can export for uh, STL file for printing. So if you would like to know more about the sub D, this kind of uh, organic shape is going to help you on your project. Don't forget to sign up the newsletter at the description below. I will send out an email for when my course is released and the first few days will have a big discount. Hope you enjoy. Please like and comment and let me know how you like it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.